Hello, my name is Thomas Fitzgibbon from Flex Compute, and today I will present the first part of CFD simulation methods for high lift aircraft configurations focused on RAND modeling sensitivities. The work performed in this study was performed as part of the AIAA high lift prediction workshop. These types of configurations operate near CL max and therefore are associated with highly complex flow physics due to flow separation and multiple unsteady interactions between many vortical structures and shear layers. These types of flows are therefore a major challenge for, from both a meshing and modeling perspective. The aim of the current work is to establish RAND's best practices for high lift flows and to assess the suitability of RAND's for these types of predictions. To support our conclusions, Higher fidelity DES simulations are also performed, which will be presented in the second part of this video series. The geometry under consideration is the publicly available half body high lift common research model. In the current work, we focus on the CL Max study, which involves an alpha sweep from low angles of attack in the linear region of the lift curve through to CL Max and into the stall region. For our CFD simulations, we use the family of answer grids generated by beta CAE and a fam family of committee generated point wise grids, which are available on the High Lift Prediction Workshop website. We begin our study by examining man's modeling sensitivities by looking at the effect of mesh refinement for the family of answer grids. The integrated loads are presented on the slide with different grid resolutions. In the linear region, the results show a high degree of consistency. However, at high alpha, the agreement with experiment worsens as the grid is refined. The primary reason for this, looking at the skin friction contours at an alpha of 19.57 degrees, is the flow topology in the root region, as well as pass in the cell. The levels of separation appear to be highly sensitive to grid refinement, and resolution of the key vertical structures present in the flow field coming from the slats, slat junctions, and the cell pylon junction and chine, leading to significant differences in the separation at the root of the wing. Outboard, however, a high degree of consistency is seen between the three grids, with all solutions predicting large regions of separated flow across the wing tip. Examining mesh sensitivity effects further, we compare predictions from two different grid families, the pointwise and the answer grids. The C-level answer grid and the D-level pointwise grid have a similar resolution of around 200 million nodes. Based on the presented figures, it can be stated that the two grids were designed with completely different philosophies. The answer grid aims to resolve the key vertical structures in the flow with targeted refinement regions leading to a coarser mesh at surface level, as well as away from the targeted regions. The pointwise grid uses a more uniformly spaced surface grid with more global regions of mesh refinement in the volume mesh that target the aircraft wake as a whole, rather than individual flow features. The effect of these different grid resolution strategies is a slightly better integrated load prediction for the answer grid when compared to experiments. The agreement between the two grids is very good in the linear region, with the pointwise grid leading to a slightly higher lift as well as drag before stall. The pointwise grid, however, stalls earlier than the answer grid, leading to poorer agreement in both lift and drag at high alpha. To examine the differences between the pointwise and answer grids further, the skin friction contours are extracted. At, a, at an angle of attack of 19.57 degrees, a, sig a significant region self-separation is seen past in the cell for the pointwise grid, which leads to the lower lift prediction. Some differences can also be seen in the blade tip region, which is the main reason in the minor differences before stall. Both grids, however, over predict the separation levels at the wingtip compared to experiments. We examined the differences in the inboard region further by extracting the off body vorticity contours at a slice close to the main wing, the cell pylon junction. 
The contours indicate a similar levels of peak vorticity in the China vortex, despite the additional region of mass refinement in the answer grid. The answer grid, however, shows a much better resolution of the outer inboard flat pylon wing joint vortex pair, which is likely to be the main contributor behind reduced separation seen further downstream for the answer grid. Another sensitivity we examined is the effect of the rotation correction in the SA turbulence model. The integrated loads presented, are presented here for the answer sea level grid. Once again, very good agreement between both SA and SARC is seen in the linear region of the lift curve, although the addition of the RC correction leads to better pitching moment prediction compared to experiment at lower upward. However, the SARC uh, results lead to earlier stall than the pure SA predictions, leading to poor agreement with experiments at high alpha. The primary reason for this is a strong separation at the root of the wing seen for the FARC results. The separation patterns at the wing, wing tip also show some differences as separation is seen past different slab brackets. Although this is not the main driver behind poorer agreement with experiments for the FARC model. To determine whether the SARC model is actually reducing the turbulent eddy viscosity in the vortex cores, off-body con vorticity contours are extracted just upstream of the wing nacelle pylon junction. It can be seen that the SARC model leads to significantly higher peak vorticity in the chine vortex compared to the SA model. The chine vortex core radius is also lower. The final sensitivity that we examined for advanced calculations is the solution is initialization strategy. Here we compare solutions initialized from free stream labeled as cold start against solutions initialized from the previous angle of attack labeled as warm start. We also have results that we only warm started near stall. The warm started solutions have closer agreement with experimental data whereas the cold started solutions stall abruptly near CL max. One aspect of steady round simulations is the fact that if separated flow develops during the startup phase or the convergence history, it is very difficult for the flow to reattach, which is the likely cause behind these differences. To examine the physics of where the differences come from, it can be seen that the this, this cold started solution develops strong separation path than the cell, whereas the warm started solutions show a mapped narrower band of reduced skin friction. Another contributor to these differences is likely to be the flow topology on the nacelle. As the cold started solution shows separated flow at the lip of the nacelle, which is not present for the warm started solution. The nacelle separation affects the downstream flow topology and interactions between the different vertical structures of the high lift wing system. A slight shift in the, between the two warm started solutions is also examined and it can be seen that these differences occur due to separation across the wing tip. The warm started solution from 17.05 degrees shows reduced separation from a more outboard slap bracket. Based on the results shown here, it appears that advanced predictions exhibit a strong mass sensitivity, and even at 200 million nodes, the solutions are not fully mass converged. This is primarily due to the need to resolve all the fl flow into structure interactions in the inboard regions. There also appears to be a sensitivity to initial conditions, although these may have been exacerbated by the mess. To further support our conclusions, in terms, in terms of the assessment of vans for high lift predictions, we perform DES simulations, which will be analyzed further in the next part of this video series. Thank you.